Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In our previous video with this big old battery pack, we added a BMS to it so we could uh, use it safely. And um, this is a 24S, and so that this is lithium ion, so the cell groups are basically 3.0 uh, to 4.2 volts. You can go down to 2.8, but I rarely go below three. And we may be asking ourselves, like, at that voltage, which is a voltage range of around 70 volt up to 100 volt, um, what are we going to, how are we going to use this? Like, that's a pretty odd voltage range. Um, and so I did do some research where I was looking for some buck converters that would, like, drop it down to 36 volt or 48 volt. And I did find one that actually would work, and it was high current, but it cost 1700 bucks. And so I was talking to the manufacturer. It's basically designed for lab work and that kind of stuff. And, you know, just outside of most people's do-it-yourself budget. So I could not go that way. Even if he was going to want to sponsor the video a bit and just give me one, I didn't want to set that up for people to be unaffordable, unattainable for lots. And so I was like, well, is there inverters out there? Well, I did find this inverter. It's an eBay seller from China. Um, that I think they just make these on the fly because they asked me all the specs when I ordered, even though I knew what I, uh, I was purchasing the one that I wanted. But this is a 3,000 watt. 84 volt inverter and so the range uh we is undetermined but i'm i'm guessing should cover about 95 percent of our battery capacity and so we're actually doing a quick test uh, we're going to use this uh, boost converter which can go up to over 100 volts and we're going to find out the minimum and the maximum of this inverter so that we can set the bms to be the minimum and maximum cell group voltage that equal those voltages so we have an auto turn off. I'd rather the BMS cut off than this go into warning. And so that's the effort. So my first task here is I'm going to go ahead and take this wire that battery hookup includes with these batteries, cut it in half and add on these lugs so that we can attach them uh, to our inverter. And um, so I'm going to work on that and then we'll come back and we'll do the test. All right, guys, I'm back. I uh, <laughs> had to do something a little ugly here. These cables are really short when you split them in half. So I had to turn the inverter upside down. And these are so inflexible that I have to kind of just raise this up. I don't know if this would be the per permanent situation. But, uh, and quite honestly, these cables are overkill for 3,000 watts. This 60 amp connector here, the XC60, would be more than enough. So my suggestion is if this is going to be your setup, um, I would just run... You can just run one or two of these or come up with some other connection to make this a plus and this a minus and use a different kind of connector that can handle. Um, using these, you're stuck with this big old wire. Now, one advantage of using this, this heavy gauge wire is if you want to do multiples. So if you want to stack three of these and run them in parallel, um, 200 amps would be more than enough to run all of them at the same time. But let's look at the inverter and let's try to figure out our range. Um, I started at 99 because uh, I didn't think it was going to do it. But this inverter seems to handle 99, and 99 divided by 24 is like um, 4.125. And I don't like charging my cells up past 4.1 anyway, so I think that's going to be my max. So I'm going to set the cell voltages and the BMS to cut off when it reaches 4.1 or 4.125. But now we need to figure out how low can it go. So we're just going to go all the way till we hear a warning. 72, so 72.6 uh, or 0.5, probably around there. So now we know a bottom, and I think I'm going to set the bottom at 3.1 volts. Um, that gives us, we we'll stay off the floor and we stay off the ceiling, and now make the cells last that much longer. And then we're going to do a capacity test using this as our max minimum, and or actually it's probably going to be around 73 volts uh, to get the 3.1 that I'm looking for. And so let's uh, do a capacity test and see how much uh, amp hours we get with this range of like 73 to 99. All right, I'm going to start that test now. All right, uh, I've completed the test. Um, I ran a sous vide uh, water bath heating thing that uh, draws at least one kilowatt and a fan to try to get it some consistent uh, draw. And if you look at the top left, I started at 68 amp hours. I just put in the number that was on the label for this thing. And we got 65.9. Now, I'm sure I could have milked it more if I went to 3 volt or lower. But I kind of like this range. And so 65 is plenty enough for my applications. 
Um, let's look at this. This is the JK BMS. If you look over to the settings, uh, I set the starting balance. So if it goes over, <coughs> excuse me, 3.15 volts, that's when it will start balancing. And I did notice that in the cells, um, as it got to the lower voltages, it did fall out of balance a bit, but not ridiculous. If you look at it now, the cell volt difference is 0 0.083. That's about what I saw. And um, I set the um, overcell protection at 4.125 and the release back at 412. And then the under voltage protection at 3.15 release and then 3.1. So this is working very well for me. Uh, if you guys are interested in this battery, uh, be sure to check out batteryhookup.com. Use my uh, discount code TECH. I'll have this inverter in my description from the eBay seller. If you want to show him a message and say you saw this on uh, the TechCentric uh, YouTube channel, he may or may do something for me. Do not know, but I think you could probably get this for 400 bucks from him if you just do an uh, offer. And so uh, we'll call this a video, and I hope you guys enjoyed.